today's scripture is anchored in the first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 3, verses 1 to 18. Chapter 3 Brothers, I could not address you as spiritual, but as worldly, mere infants in Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not yet ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. You are still worldly, for since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere men? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not mere men? What, after all, is Apollos? And what is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe, as the Lord has assigned to each his task. I planted the seed. Apollos watered it, but God made it grow. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything but only God who makes things grow. The man who plants and the man who waters have one purpose, and each will be rewarded according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as an expert builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should be careful how he builds. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If any man builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, his work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each man's work. If what he has built survives, he will receive his reward. If it is burned up, he will suffer loss. He himself will be saved, but only as one escaping through the flames. Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple, and that God's Spirit lives in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him, for God's temple is sacred, and you are that temple. Do not deceive yourselves. If any one of you thinks he is wise by the standards of this age, he should become a fool so that he may become wise. Good morning. How are you? The Lord is good. Amen. He's a good God. Um, alam ko na hindi tayo lahat parehas ng klase ng pagkagising ngayong umaga. Ang iba ay maganda ang gising, maganda ang tulog. Ang iba ay medyo pangit ang gising, pangit din ang tulog. Ano? Ang iba wala pang tulog. But uh, thank the Lord that we are here to worship Him and to listen to His Word. Are you ready? Yes, we are ready. Now, before I begin, I just would like to welcome those who are first-timers joining us for the first time. I'm glad to welcome you if this is your first time. Kindly raise your hand if this is your first time to join us. Alaba? Huh? Wala ang first time. So, ano na lang? Yung, yung balikbaya na lang. Ano? <laughs> welcome back, Sis Mylene. Thank the Lord for a safe travel. Mm. Well, uh, it is always a joy to welcome one another. Once a week lang tayo nagkikita-kita. So, samantalahin natin ang pagkakataon ito to welcome one another. Makadao pang palad man lang natin. At least kalahati ng congregation natin ngayong umaga. Shall we all stand and let's uh, just uh, welcome one another.
masaya, no? Napakaligaya at kahangahanga, sabi sa kanta, na ang magkakapatid ay magsama-sama. I want you to bow down your heads. We will pray. Ask the Lord for wisdom and guidance. Father, thank you for this opportunity to be gathered as your children. Thank you for allowing us to minister to one another, to be encouraged by the presence of each other. And thank you for allowing us to worship your name. Lord, today we will listen to your words. May our hearts be filled with joy and gladness as we welcome your message. Yes, Lord, we are opening our minds and our hearts. Please speak. We will listen. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, a few days ago, many of us have witnessed actually, and we were shocked. We were shocked when we saw the chief PNP, Director General Ronald Bato de la Rosa, have actually cried for the first time on television. He cried uh, during the Senate hearing on drugs. Uh, let me show you this video to those who are not able to see this. They are uh, losing trust and confidence to the police. Because I myself, I say, mo, hindi ako yan, ha? Hindi mo na minsan alam kung sinong pagkatiwalaan. Pero, uh, like for example, itong nangyari kay Chief Inspector Jovis Pinido. Niligay ko siya doon as Chief of Police sa Albuera. Because buong paniwala ko, kahit hindi ko siya personally kilala, buong paniwala ko na you will be my talagang siya yung mapagkatiwalaan ko sa instructions na binigyan ni Presidente na we will fight to the to the last yung we will, we will really fight the drugs even, even though it will cost everything my everything our everything uh, ako sa ngayon here comes nga nandito si Kevin in-implicate siya na nakakatanggap ng pera, uh, minsan, uh, uh, Your Honor, pinapasadyos ko na yung sitwasyon namin sa pinpit. <laughs> gusto, gusto ko na lang ma-reform yung pinpit. <laughs> gusto eh, para naman ito yung organisasyon namin. Pero, uh, ako ay hirap na hirap na, but I will never surrender. The, the chief PMP is known for his courage. He is known for his fearless stand as a general. And this time he was caught in his emotional water loop. When he realized that he is actually leaving, uh, leading and living with the 160,000 PMP officers dotted with hundreds of his calawags, engaged in drug trade. Hindi niya na alam kung sino-sino. Sabi niya nga, in fact, during the hearing, he said, hindi ko na alam kung sino ang pagkakatiwalaan ko sa loob. Can you imagine a chief PNP <laughs> saying that? And he even disclosed that there is a group of PNP senior officers who wanted to push him out of the PNP leadership. And so out of frustration, a strong man cried. I believe that the same emotional upsurge, maybe not the same, pero emotional upsurge was felt by, felt by Paul when he wrote the first letter to the Corinth, to the church in Corinth while he was in Ephesus during his third missionary journey. Can I ask you to open your Bibles with me to that person in the book of Corinthians chapter 3? <clears throat> he started with the word, Brothers, I could not address you as spiritual, but as worldly, mere infants in Christ. Imagine nyo, mukha ni Paul, nung sinusulat niya yan. I don't think he was smiling. I think he was in an, in an emotional upsurge when he was writing this. Mga kapatid, hindi ko kayo ma-address ng mga spiritual, mga worldly kayo. 
The Apostle Paul had planted the church in Corinth during his second missionary journey. And just a few years later, few years later, he was receiving negative reports about the church whom he thought now growing in faith. But to his surprise, the church was not just stagnant. The church was crowded with peewee believers. And that's the title of my message this morning. Living and growing with the peewee believers. Peewee, ano ba gayan? Ano? Chicharia. Living with the chicharia believers. What's peewee? Peewee just means midgets, uh, dwarf, hindi lumalago, hindi lumalaki. Or mga mananampalatayang matagal na, pero baby Christians pa rin. Sa isip, sa salita, at sa gawa. We call them chicharia Christians. Peewee Christians. And so in this text, Paul expressed his honest feelings about them. So in verse 1, he said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I could not address you as spiritual or mature believers because you are not. Mga immature kayo, sabi ni Paul. But the good thing is he didn't pin down himself in just criticism. He ends up from mere criticism to encouragement, to strengthening. Today, well, many churches all over the world are crowded with peewee believers. Mga mananampalatayang hindi katugma ang kanilang, hindi magkatugma ang kanilang spiritual age sa kanilang spiritual maturity. Hindi tugma ang spiritual age sa spiritual maturity. Meron kayang peewee believers sa GCF Lagaspe. Meron man wala, let's observe and learn how Paul encouraged or lectured the believers in Corinth on how they should live with the Christians who are peewee. Now, before I move on to the two points, we're not here, just take note, we're not here to identify who among us here are peewee Christians. Paul's intention is to teach us how to, de how to deal with them gently. That's our intention of this message. Ano, to, de to deal with them gently and positively without being affected or pushing them out. And this morning, let me share with you two things. Two things. Number one, in dealing with the peewee believers, we need to be realistic in our judgment. Say that with me. One, two, three, go. Yes, we need to be realistic in our judgment. Let's look at uh, verses 1 to 4. Paul says, Brothers, I could not address you as spiritual, but worldly, mere infants in Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not yet ready for it. Indeed, you are not, you are still not ready. You are still worldly, for since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, you are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere men? For when one says, I follow Paul, and other, I follow Apollos, are you not mere men? Okay, and let's move down to verse 18. Verse 18. Do not deceive yourself. If any one of you think that he is wise by the standard of his age, he should become fool so that he may become wise. Do not, be deceived, do not deceive yourself. So, the church in Corinth, my brothers and sisters, was one of the fastest growing churches in the Asia Minor during that time. In all the churches planted by Paul, and Corinth was the one growing fast. Mabilis ang growth nila. The church was largely made up of Gentiles and Jews. Again, sinabi ko kanina, during his second missionary journey, he started this church in Corinth, now Athens of Greece. Ang Corinth, Corinth ng ar araw ay Athens yan ngayon sa Greece. Now in this text, Paul described or mentioned the kind of church there was in Corinth. 
the kind of membership they have. He mentioned three words to describe them. Number one, he said, some of you are pneumaticus. Say that, uh, uh, no, the, the Greek word, pneumaticus. Some of you are spiritual, pneumaticus. It pertains to the growing Christian in church, inside the church. So if, if you are a growing believer, you are a pneumaticus. Uh, some of the members of this church in Corinth are pneumaticus, growing in faith. But some of you are sarkikoi or sarkinoi. Carnal, worldly. It, per, it refers to the, to the one who is dominated by the world. They are Christians, but they are still dominated by the world. Ibig sabihin, yung buhay nila, worldly pa rin. Yung pananalita nila, worldly. Yung, yung, uh, yung lahat sa kanila. They are, their minds are filled and controlled by the by the pattern of the world. And tawag doon is Sarkinois. And some of the members of the church are Nipias. Nipias pertains to the new members of the body of Christ. Mamaya maya, meron tayong i-welcome the new members of the body of Christ. Meron tayong right hand of fellowship and probably we could call them the Nipias. So kung titingnan natin, halos walang pinagkaiba ang church in Corinth sa maraming churches ngayon and probably sa church din natin. Meron ba dito mga pneumaticos? Say amen if you, you think we have pneumaticos here? Wow, dalawa lang ang kumbinsido. Ah, Oolitiko, meron ba dito growing Christians? Of course naman, palawakan natin si Lord. We are growing Christians. Pneumaticus. Pero may rin ba ditong sarkinoids? Hanap-hanap. <laughs> Meron ba ditong nipios? Of course. Mga bagong mananampalataya. You know, in their context, what was the prevailing, prevailing effects of the presence of these three kinds of people inside the church in Corinth. Well, obviously, in verse 3, sabi ni Paul sa verse 3, look at that. Sa verse 3, ito yung result ng presence ng tatlong klaseng believers. Brothers, sa verse 3, you are still worldly for there is what? Jealousy and quarreling among you inside the church as a result nung tatlong klaseng Christians na ito na nagsama-sama sa loob ng church. In, in other words, merong, merong uh, gulo, merong hindi pagkakaunawaan, may jealousy and quarreling inside the church. No? That is, uh, that's why in verse 1, fold them, fold them in their face. Sabi sa verse 1, balikan natin sa verse 1. Because of this, sabi ni Paul sa verse 1, that's why I could not address you as spiritual, as spiritual, but as worldly. Now, so what's wrong with being worldly? Ang Greek word na nilagay dito ay sarkinoi. Worldly. Sarks from the word flesh. Sarks. Now, what's wrong with being in flesh? Well, ang, the, the problem with some of the Corinthian believers was that, was that they were not only made of flesh or sarkinoi, they were sarkikoi. And nakalagay kasi dyan, sarkinoi. That's the, the, the word here used. But they were not only sarkinoi, they were sarkikoi. Ibig sabihin, they were dominated and controlled by the world. Hindi lang sila made of flesh, they were controlled by the flesh. They were not only sarkinoi, they were sarkikoi. Kaya sila nagkakagulo. Now, the church in Corinth was congregated with believers of disproportionate Christian maturity. Yun nga yun, the pneumaticos are growing, uh, growing in their biblical knowledge. But they have, itong problema ng mga pneumaticos doon sa Corinth. They are growing in biblical knowledge, but they have set a biblical standard. May standard na sila na dapat ang mga growing believers ganito ang mukha. Pag hindi ganito ang mukha, hindi kayo growing believers. So, mga group of growing believers doon, nag-set ng standard of what a Christian should be. Pag hindi 
Tumapat doon sa standard nila, I reject sila. Diyan kayo sa mga sarkinoids. Nakuha nyo, nagkaroon ng bahabahagi sila. Kami, mga neumaticos, because we are growing in faith, dapat tumaas ang standard nyo, kagaya ng standard namin. Kayo, mga sarkinoids kayo eh. Yun ang grupo ng mga sarkinoids, o uh, ng mga neumaticos. The mga sarkinoids naman were, were present inside the church, but they are more active in the debate outside the church. Alam mo, ang mga taga, mga taga, Corinth, ang Corinth ay Athens kung sa ngayon, doon nagsimula ang grupo ng mga Gnostic, ang Gnosticism doon nagsimula. Ano ibig sabihin? They are lovers of wisdom. They love debate. They love to increase their human wisdom. Aral sila ng aral. Ang daming membro sa church na mga aral na maray. So they are more interested of the debate outside the church than what's inside, what's going on inside the church. So yun ang grupo ng mga sarkinoids. They are full of wisdom. They are studied people. Kaya lang wala silang masyadong pakialam sa loob ng church. Nandun sila sa labas. Isang grupo naman yun. Of course, ang pinakakawawa sa kanila ay ang mga nepeos. They are just starting believers. Hindi nila alam kung anong path ang kanilang susundan. Ang mga neumaticos, who loves the word of God. Ang mga sarkinoids, who loves wisdom. That's why there, were, there are quarreling and jealousy among the group. So mga kapatid, to attain spiritual maturity and unity in the church of Corinth, Paul taught them the value of realistic judgment and expectation. So in verse 18, Paul admonished them to stop fooling themselves. They must be realistic in their judgment. Anong ibig natin sabihin dito? Uh, you need, sabi ni Paul sa kanay, you need to be realistic in your judgment. In other words, he was saying, magbigay kayo ng room for improvement sa bawat isa. Be willing to extend the grace of God to others. Folks, like the church in Corinth, dito sa ating church ay meron din kahalintula din na ganyong situation. Meron ba ditong mga growing Christians? Meron. Meron ba ditong mga mga sarkinoids? Meron. Meron ba ditong mga peewee believers? Yung mga believers na hindi tugma ang kanilang maturity sa kanilang edad sa pananampalataya? Meron. Meron ba ditong mga nepeos Christians? Meron. So what now? Kung meron, idilis natin sila? Kasi mga sakit sila sa ulo? The Bible says we need to, sabi ni Paul, dito ang suggestion ni Paul is be uh, careful with your judgment. Be careful with your judgment. Instead of pushing them out, we need to restore them Gently. They ipagpasupugon, they ipagchismison, they ipost sa, sa FB. While, mga kapatid, listen carefully. While it is normal to expect idealistically, let us be realistic also. Hindi lahat ng nasa church ay mga growing believers. Hindi lahat dito ay pare-pareha sa ating level of maturity. So we need to be realistic in our expectation. Pagpasok mo dito, hindi lahat ng makikita mo dito ay pareha sa iyo ang biblical knowledge. Hindi lahat ng makikita di mo dito ay pareha sa iyo ang ang maturity in faith. Before we cast our expectation or judgment to the other members of the church, let us first touch the ground. We must understand na hindi, hindi lahat ng nasa church ay kagaya natin mag-isip, kagaya natin ang background, at kagaya natin ang paninindigan. Remember folks, that longing for the ideal while criticizing the real is an evidence of immaturity. Let me repeat that. Nandiyan ba yan? Longing for the ideal while criticizing the real is an evidence of maturity. We must not forget that the church is made up of real sinners saved by grace. 
Alam niyo mga kapatid, the least of disappointing circumstances and personalities inside the church could be very long. You know, if I ask you here today, meron ka bang hindi kasundo sa church? Meron? Meron. Meron ba sa church na Christian na hindi mo gusto ang ugali? Meron. Meron ba sa church na taong ayaw mo yung kanyang pamumuhay? Meron. Meron ba sa church na taong pig-arat-aratan ka? Nahiling mo pala na, papauli ka na. <laughs> Uli na ako. Meron. Because this is not a church for the perfect people. This is a church of the imperfect people na nagkatipon-tipon. Pero, lahat tayo ay recipient ng grasya ng Diyos. Amen? Oh, yes. So let us be realistic in our judgment and expectation. Yan ang sabi ni Paul sa kanila. Kaya kayo nag-aaway, aaway, aaway. Kasi ang expectation ninyo sa bawat isa, grabe. Ang judgment ninyo, grabe. Again, our levels, levels of maturity are not the same, folks. You have to remember that, just like the church in Corinth. We are not uniform in our spiritual development. May mga kristyano na mature sa ibang area ng buhay nila, pero immature sa ibang area ng buhay. No one can say na dahil matagal na ako sa mana ng palataya, na dahil pastor na ako, na dahil elder na ako, or diko na ako, or Bible study leader na ako, or missionary ako, ay perfect na ako sa maturity. Remember na lahat tayo ay nasa proseso. We are on the process of becoming like Christ. Therefore, huwag tayong madidiscourage, huwag tayong madidismaya kung nakita natin ang isang tao ay may kapalpakan sa kanyang buhay. Let us not do that. Let us extend the grace of God. All of us should consider the reality with utmost importance yung level of maturity natin ay hindi pariparehas to avoid being judgmental to others. Sometimes we are becoming impatient sa mga new believers. Sa mga piwi believers. Impatient. We are becoming impatient. Bakit? Alam mo, pag sinasabi natin, alam mo, immature yan, you are simply saying, ako mature. Pag sinasabi mong there is immaturity in you, you are simply saying na I am mature than you. No one can say that except God. Amen? Yeah. Ang Diyos lang ang nakakaalam kang level kang maturity mo. Kaya dahil kita magparaact as if mas mature kita kaya sa iba. Kung sa palagay mo mature ka, patunayan mo yan sa buhay mo. Huwag mong patunayan yan sa theology mo. Amen? Dahil, sa, dapat, minsan, we are thinking like, dapat kasi matagal ka ng krasyano, dapat ganito ka, leader ka na eh, dapat ganito ka. Ha? Chris, uh, uh, elder ka, dapat ganito. Deacon ka kasi, dapat ganito ka. Hindi ganun yun, mga kapatid. Becoming realistic in our expectation could help us grow healthy as Christians. You know, instead of judging people, instead of pushing them out, and, and, and at pilitin natin silang ma-reach ang level of, of um, maturity according to what we expect, let us rather extend the grace of God to them. One time, Merong, uh, after our worship service when I was still in Naga, pastoring Naga, alam nyo naman yun, pag nandito ako, uh, Naga, syempre ang aking uh, in example. Pag doon ako, hindi naman. Pero lahat ng example ko doon, puro good. Pag, yeah. <laughs> uh, one time when I was, uh, I nag-speak ako sa Naga, 
And nandun pa ako nagpapastor. A, visi- a visitor came to me and said, Visitor, pastor, siguro mga two, one or twice yung umaten. Lumapit siya sa akin, sabi niya sa akin, Pastor, may, may tinuturo siya ng kanyang uso. Hindi niya tinuro ng kamay. Sabi niya, uh, sabi niya, member ba yan dito? Sabi ko, oo naman, member yan dito, matagal na. Sabi niya, talaga, pastor. Sabi ko, oo naman, bakit, bakit, bakit? Sabi niya, wala lang, kasi kapitbahay namin yan eh. O ano kung kapitbahay nyo? Sabi niya, Pastor, kaawayan lang lahat namin na kapitbahay. Matindi nga niya yan. Sabi talaga, so hindi naman ako agad naniwala sa kanya kasi baka may alitan lang sila at, you know, uh, sinisiraan. So one day, I visited, to confirm, I visited that uh, the member of the church. So, nandun sila sa village, nagkataon na parang ang tinitira nila ay parang, uh, parang ano, Parang tondo, no? dikit-dikit yung bahay. Hindi naman squatters, pero parang uh, dikit-dikit ang bahay. Tapos isa lang yung kalsada papasok. So hindi ko alam kung saan ang bahay nilang sa loob. Tinanong ko doon sa pinakaunang tindahan sa may gate, sa may, uh, sa may labasan. Uh, tinanong ko, sabi ko, uh, kilala niyo ba ang taong to? Pambihira yan. Iba ang sagot. Sabi niya, sino ba naman hindi makakilala niyan, sir, dito? <laughs> Grabe nga niya yan. Ah, napaka-chismosa nga niya ng taong yan. Ah, at in fact, halos nga niya lahat dito, hindi nang kasundo. Ah, sabi ko, sabi niya sa akin, bakit sir, bakit sino, sino ba kayo? Ano, ano niya ba kayo? Ba't niyo hinahanap? Ah, sabi ko, wala, friend. <laughs> Hindi ko na amin na member sa ng church, madadamay pa yung church. Yeah. <laughs> well, mga kapatid, pagpasok mo dito sa church, anong tingin mo sa mga kapwa mong kristyano? Paminsan-minsan, nasanay tayo ng una nating tinitingnan na yung negative. Lahat tayo may negative, di ba? Amen ba? Pero palagay ko hindi dapat na ang una-una nating titingnan ay ang negative, kundi dapat ang positive. Lahat tayo may negative. Let us not magnify the negative of each one of us. Kasi pag minagnify natin ang negative ng bawat siya sa atin, paglabas natin dito, malungkot tayo. Amen? Is that correct? Instead, let us extend the grace of God. Lahat tayo dito ay hindi pa, mat, hindi pa tayo na-reach ng level of becoming like Christ. So let us be patient. and extend God's grace. Uh, I remember the story, ito yung totoong nangyari sa London. There was, there, there was a tradition of using the finger balls, uh, bowl, b- bowl. Uh, the finger balls served after meal, so the, so the guests could wash their fingers after meal. So according to this story, si Queen Victoria hosted a diplomatic reception in London. And a guest of honor was an African tribal chieftain. African tribal chieftain. All went well during the meal until the end of the fellowship or meal when the finger balls were served. So, ang nangyari, nung sineserve na yung finger ball, ano nga yung purpose nun? Hugasan ng kamay. May tubig na yung nalaman eh. So, sineserve na yung finger ball. Everybody was shocked and they were all surprised na yung unang, siyempre unang binigyan yung guest. Nung matanggap ng guest yung uh, finger ball, nagulat sila na ininom tulos. Gulat na gulat sila kasi sa tradisyon nila, hindi pwede yun. <laughs> kasi nga, kabastusan yun eh. Iinumin mo yung hugasan ng kamay. Ano? So, there was a silence. To the last drop of the, of the uh, water, ininom niya lang talaga ang content. So there was a silence. They were all shocked because traditionally, it was against their practice, especially in front of the queen. So after a long silence, they were all more shocked when the queen herself took her finger ball and drank it to the last drop. Lalo silang nagulat. Kasi yung queen ay sinalaula ang kanilang tradisyon. Wala silang magawa. 
nakita na lang nila lahat, lahat sila, tinaas ang finger bowl at ininom nila lahat ng tubig na nandun. After that, nagkaroon ng close relationship ang Africa at ang London. Kasi naramdaman ng Chip Tain ang pag-welcome sa kanya. He was not rejected kahit na mali ang kanyang ginawa. At ang queen naman, hindi nagtaas ng pride at sinabihan, mali yan! Hindi yan ang ugali dito sa GCF! Mali yan! But instead, Ha? Pinakita niya sa kanya na hindi mo pa kasi naiintihan ng tradisyon namin. So I should rather extend my grace than ipahiya ka dito. Is that correct? Yes. Sometimes we need to do, we need to follow the example of Queen Victoria inside the fellowship, inside the body of Christ. Brothers and sisters, if we must sacrifice our pride, If we must sacrifice what we think right. Of course, we, I'm not asking you to sacrifice the biblical principles. Biblical principles should be there no matter what. And it should not be sacrificed. Pero pag yun lang naman, ay rights mo lang. Pananaw mo lang. There are, this should come. Dapat dumating tayo sa point that we are willing to sacrifice our pride, our idealism, our principles, and our preferences for the sake of unity and for the sake of peace. Mapalad ang umuunawa kisa lagi na lang inuunawa. So sometimes, sometimes instead of saying, hey, this is what I want, ito na ako, you must understand me. Hindi dapat palaging ganun. Hindi lang ikaw ang membro ng church at hindi lang ikaw ang mahal ng Diyos. Lahat tayo mahal ng Diyos. Hindi lang ikaw ang anak ng Diyos. Hindi lang sa iyo pinakita ni Lord ng grasya. Lahat tayo kaya we should be willing to open and sacrifice sometimes our principles. Sometimes we are into so much espousing our rights and idealism. Wala namang masama doon. Kaya lang uh, Christians As Christians, love and relationship should be more valuable than rights and idealism. We have to remember na may limitasyon ng rights. Your rights end where the rights of others begin. May limitasyon yan. So in so long as we are not sacrificing the biblical principle, let us be willing to Open God's grace to others. Do you say amen? Yes. Let's give God a big hand. Hallelujah. <laughs> Number two. How do we deal with the PB believers inside the church? Number two. We must rather, what? To cast our allegiance to Christ alone. Christ alone. In this verse, Paul was trying to address the issue of loyalty and allegiance. One of the causes of their division is that they are uncertain of whom they should give their allegiance. Some says, ay kay Paul ako. Some says, kay Apollos ako eh. Some says, kay Peter ako. And some says, kay Christ. So that in, the, in these verses, Paul was correcting their erroneous demonstration of loyalty. Sabi sa verses 5 to 7, look at this. What after all is Apollos? And what is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe, as the Lord has assigned to it his task. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God made it grow. So neither he who plant nor he who waters is anything, but only God who makes the things grow. So to correct their misguided application of loyalty, he gave them principles to follow. To follow, He was simply correcting them. Hindi, hindi si Paul, hindi si Peter, hindi si Apollos ang dapat bigyan nyo ng loyalty. Kung hindi si Christ. Sometimes it's just so sad that in the church, ang loyalty natin kung kanin-kanino napupunta. 
Bato ba sa langit ang tamaan, huwag magalit. Pero our loyalty should be focused on Christ. Minsan, nagpipili tayo ng speakers. Sino bang speaker ngayon? Ah, si ganito. Mm. Ah, antukin tayo niyan. Sino bang speaker na to? Si ganito. Mm. Sige, atin tayo. Okay yan. How many weeks ago I was talking to a pastor? Kasi I'm, I'm, I'm active in the body ministry here in Lagaspe. I'm talking, I was talking to a pastor and he almost cried. Sabi niya, sabi ko, ano nangyari? Sabi niya, he had to leave the church. Uh, the, 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 kasi may, ano, ano siya, assistant pastor siya ng isang pastor, ng senior pastor. Ah, nakausap po yung assistant pastor. Yung senior pastor had to leave the church kasi may konting na nangyari. So, I had to leave the church. He was not thinking na almost 80% of the members sasama doon. O, anong nangyari? 20% ang naiwan sa kanya. Ang 80% sumama doon kung saan nagpunta yung senior pastor. Tampang loyalty na mga to. Pastors are not forever inside the church. I'm not forever here. I may be here for just few years. Seven years na ako dito, hindi ko alam kung hanggang eight years, nine years, ten years. But the church of the Lord should stay, should should remain faithful to His to the Lord. Tama ba? We should give. Yes, let's give God and let's. <laughs> ang faithfulness natin ay nakai Lord dapat hindi sa mga leaders ng church, kasi ang mga leaders ng church meron din yun mga kapalpakan. That if we fix our eyes on them, madi discourage lang tayo sa kanila. You can see me as I am inside, in front of you here, nakasot, nagpa-preach about the good news. But do you know me in, at home? Or at least some of you know me that well. Pero I'm not perfect. If you give your loyalty to me, someday you may be discouraged probably. Only God is perfect. Yes. So to give them, uh, to give, to uh, guide them in their misconception of loyalty, Paul gave them principles to follow. Number one, sabi ni Paul, Christians must be certain of whom they build their spiritual foundation. The believers in Corinth were active in the ministries of the church, but one of the problems that causes their disunity was their being confused. Who? of who the, to build their spiritual foundation on. May mga kristyano na masyadong nakafocus sa leaders, sa pastors, sa elders, sa deacons. So in this context, obviously, ganun ang problema nila. Ang, ang iba, ang gusto si Apollos, ang iba, gusto si Paul, pero walang na-mention na gusto nila si Christ. Marami niya noon, marami din niya ngayon. Masarap pakinggan bilang isang pastor na sasabihin na yung pastor, ang loyalty namin nasa sa'yo. Ang sarap pakinggan nun. Pero I am not here to get your loyalty. Kasi baka pagalitan ako ni Lord na kinuha ko yung loyalty nyo. Our loyalty should be to Christ. Amen? Yes. Ganyan na ganyan ang problema nila dati. Kaya nga sabi ni Paul, wag kami ang foundation ng inyong spiritual maturity. We are also servants of the Lord. Dapat ang inyong loyalty ay na kay Christ. May hindi man kayo makasundo sa loob ng church, it's okay, ang loyalty ko na kay Christ. Hindi yung wala kayo makasundo, pag hindi, may, may hindi kayo nakasundo dito, lilipat na naman kayo ng church. Lilipat na naman ang church. Ganon din naman doon eh. So we should fix our loyalty to Christ. The second principle that Paul gave them to correct their misguided application of loyalty is a believer must be careful on how they build others' spiritual foundation. Bababasa niyo yan sa 12 to 17. Hindi na natin babasahin. I'm nearly closing. In these verses, Paul was reminding the believers of their accountability 
in building others' foundation. He was like saying, be careful of the material you are using in building the foundation because in the end, whatever we build on the foundation, on that foundation or Christ, will be tested on fire or by fire on the day of judgment. At malalaman ng lahat kung anong klaseng foundation ang kinatatayuan ng tinuruan mo. In a sense, Paul was saying, we must be careful on how we build the foundation, the spiritual foundation, ng mga nililid mo kay Christ. Listen carefully. May mga, meron kasi mga Christian na loyal sa discipler nila kaysa sa church. Mas loyal sa discipler nila kaysa sa church. Ang inahanap-hanap yung discipler nila kaysa sa church. It's okay na magkaroon ng closeness ang discipler at ang disciple. Pero mga discipler, saan nyo ba tinuturo ang loyalty ng disciple nyo? Sa'yo? Sa church? At kay Christ? Merong isang grupo na ngayon wala na silang, well, again, not in Nagaspia. Naga. Kawawa taga na. Ba't totoo naman to? Meron isang grupo ng young people na nagatin sa GCF. Siguro mga 15 sila. So, after probably three months of attendance, kinausap ko yung leader nila. Sabi ko, anong plano nyo? Sabi na pastor, pinag-aaralan namin ang church niyo. Bakit? Kasi kung uh, okay, di dito na kami mag-church. Okay, ha? So, ano, ano saan kayo galing? Ano, saan grupo kayo? Sabi nila, pastor, marami na kaming napuntahan na church. Ganon? Pa, pa, church happy ngayon kaming grupo? Talaga? Uh, so, parang nga niya, wala pa kami nagugustuhan. Uh, so, binirik ko siya. Sabi ko, I'm sure hindi nyo rin magugusta ng GCF. Kasi pare-parehas lang naman dito, yung church na ito. Isa lang ang sinasamba natin. Isa lang ang Biblia natin. Parehas may problema ang lahat ng mga church. So, I'm sure hindi nyo rin magugusta. Sabi ko, ano ang nangyari sa inyo? Bakit kayo palipat-lipat ng church? Alam mo, sabi nila, Pastor, kung ano yung gusto ng leader namin doon kami. Wow. They're loyal to their disciple. Wala ang loyalty sa church. I'm sure that the Apostle Paul was not against discipleship. Siya nga mismo, ang dami niyang disciples. He was simply reminding the believers na baka naman, imbis kay Lord mapunta ang loyalty ng tinuturuan mo, ay sa'yo na napunta. Hindi na evangelism ang nangyari, kundi evangeligaw na. Hindi na discipleship, date discipleship na ang nangyari. While it is normal na magkaroon ng emotional attachment ng disciple sa discipler niya, ibang usapan pag ang loyalty ay napunta na sa'yo at hindi na kay Christ. At yan. Yes, even our church, GCF Lagaspi, so congregated with believers of disproportionate Christian maturity. Hindi pari-parihas ang maturity natin. It is, this is in fact a community of imperfect people. But you can surely attain maturity. We can all surely attain maturity. At the end of the day, si Lord tayo, kay Lord tayo mag-report. So what shall we do? Two things. Number one, we should just be realistic in our judgment. Huwag mong ilagay sa isipan mo na dapat pag nakita mo sa church, hindi na nagkakamali yan. Let's be realistic. Lahat tayo na nandito ay nagkakamali. Kagaya mo. So let's be realistic. And number two, ibigay natin ang loyalty natin kay Christ. Huwag sa nasa harapan ninyo. Huwag sa nasa katabi ninyo. Ibigay natin ang loyalty natin kay Christ. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for reminding us of your word. So the Apostle Paul, kagaya ng church in Corinth, mention hindi kami nagkakasundo, may, may, may quarreling among us. Kasi hindi pa rin sa ang spiritual maturity. But Lord, thank you na kahit hindi pa rin sa ang spiritual maturity namin, we can grow in faith. We can be mature. We can be united. We just need to be careful 
in our judgment, in our we should give our loyalty only to Christ. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. To God be the glory.